Hello everyone, this is Moni with Feng Shui for Us and today I would like to chat with you about what colors you should avoid in your kitchen. The kitchen in Feng Shui is closely associated with the life area that we call wealth, prosperity and self-worth. So this is associated to um, the circumstances of your birth because they have largely determined your relationship with wealth. Whether your families were doing okay or not financially, what kind of security you felt when you were growing up, and the notions that you decided to accept about money and wealth that came from that upbringing, from either having an easy time with money or not, from having the experience that money came to you easily or having the experience that it was really hard to get money. So all that matters and all that shapes the way that you perceive your life, the way that you perceive the world, and the way that you relate to receiving blessings from the universe, blessings from other people, and just blessings in general from any source. The kitchen, therefore, because it is uh, associated with survival, and it is survival, it's not survival of the fittest, you know, the um, Darwin is often quoted as saying it's survival of the fittest, but Darwin didn't say that. Darwin actually said it is the survival of the best adapted to an environment, right? And uh, in Feng Shui, the beauty is that you get to generate your own environment. So if your environment where you grew up was not a really good environment, that can have affected how you perceive wealth. And the kitchen is the place associated with wealth because an abundance of food and the access to food is one of the most important things that has determined wealth over the history of humanity. The access to food warranted survival and survival is necessary for you to be able to thrive. You have to survive before you can thrive. And one of the most important decisions that you can make about the kitchen is regarding colors, because if you don't nail the colors that are right for you, for your home in your kitchen, that is hard to change. Uh, let's talk about walls, right? You decide to change, paint your walls a different color, that's gonna take work, that's gonna take effort. But even more cabinets, if you redo your kitchen or if you are designing your kitchen for the first time and you choose the wrong color of cabinets, that is very expensive to change. Unless you are a do-it-yourself kind of person. Um, I had um, talked with um, a friend who paints for a living. You know, he paints all sorts of things in homes and businesses. And one of the things he does is he paints cabinets for people who want to give a new feeling to their kitchen without completely changing um, the layout and doing a full remodel. And so he told me he charges $84 per door. $84 per door. And uh, you know, so just count how many doors are in your kitchen and then you can have a calculation of how much it would cost you to repaint your cabinets, unless you want to do it yourself, of course. And so let me go to the Bagua map. So this is the Bagua map. When you look at the Bagua map, you have these colors, right? Each life area has a color. And a lot of people make the mistake, say for example, that they have their kitchen in the prosperity corner. They're like, whoa, I'm gonna paint my kitchen purple. And somebody might have their kitchen in the relationship corner and they might say, oh wow, you know, I'm gonna paint my, kit my kitchen hot pink. And that is a no-no, don't ever do that. Do not ever do that. These colors that you see in the Bagua map, are colors for the cures, quote unquote cures, which are enhancements that you put in these corners and midpoints of the home to remind yourself of what are your goals for each life area. But these were never meant to be the colors for whole walls or the colors for the whole room in the home. So don't go by this, don't go by the Bagua map to choose colors. Also, do not go by the compass directions to choose colors. Some people are like, oh, I have a kitchen facing east, so it's going to be green. I have a kitchen facing south, so it's going to be red. Do not let the compass directions determine the colors for your kitchens. So when how to find uh, colors for your kitchens is a combination of 
what your kitchen needs at, as a space, right? Is your kitchen dark? Is it light? How much natural light do you get? Is it more small? Is it large? But also where it is located in the back one that? And uh, so the combination of the function of the kitchen with where it's located in the Bagua map is going to give you an idea what colors to use, but not by these colors, not I have a kitchen in the middle, so I'm going to paint it yellow. No, it's by the color of the element. Each of these life areas has an element. So you have to see how the element in that spot of the Bagua map combines with the element of the kitchen, which is wood. And it is small wood, not big wood. Big wood element is the element for the dining area. Small wood element is the element for the kitchen. So let me tell, talk to you about what colors to not use in the kitchen because they hurt the wood element. The wood element is an element for wealth and wealth growth. When you think about the wood element, don't think about the piece of wood. Think about the live, thriving tree in a thriving, healthy forest. And so the elements that cut wood or the element that cuts wood is metal. And metal is the color white and the color gray. And right now, what you have is that the trend has been for the last few years to redo kitchens in all white and all gray. And so those kitchens that are redone in all white and all gray, they do not promote wealth. They are not good for wealth. So don't do that. And another set of colors that you don't want to use is fire colors because fire burns wood. And so if you have too much fire, that fire is going to burn the wood in the kitchen and slow down the growth of your wealth. Fire colors would be red, orange, and yellow. Now, this doesn't mean that you can have a red teapot, like I have a red teapot. It means you should not paint the walls in those colors. You should not paint the cabinets in those colors because fire burns wood. So red, most reds, um, very bright oranges and lemon yellow are colors that are totally not recommended for the kitchen because this um, fire is going to burn the wood. And then there are also colors that are not recommended for the kitchen because of practical reasons. So orange and yellow of any kind and red of any kind, even if it's not a fiery red, it has the effect of making you want to eat more and faster sugars, carbs, and fats. That is the reason that um, junk food uh, places choose those colors. I mean, think about Burger King, McDonald's, uh, Krispies, Popeyes. They all use these colors because these colors stimulate the appetite and they make you want to eat things that are more sugary, more loaded in carbs and more fatty. And also and they, um, they promote the consumption of more salt to compensate you know, for all the carbs and the sweets. And so these are colors that you should not use in your kitchen. And other colors that you shouldn't use in your kitchen is like black or deep blues because, or even really dark greens, because those are colors that suppress appetite. And you might say, well, I need my appetite suppressed because I have gained weight and I need to lose weight. So I'm redo my whole kitchen in blue so that I suppress my appetite. But what I have seen happens in practice is that when people do their kitchen in blue or any similar colors, they start eating out more or they start getting more takeout or they just they don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen because their kitchen is not pleasant. And so what they do is they um, eat in other places. They might take their food to eat. Um, I mean, you might not always eat in the kitchen, right? You may have a, a place where you eat in the kitchen and you may also have a dining room. But what I have noticed happens is when people have this situation where their kitchen is suppressing appetite, they tend to go eat in front of a screen. And uh, they tend to eat other things, you know, they order other things. They end up eating more and less healthy than what they eat, um, they would eat ordinarily. And so don't go by the compass directions, don't go by the Bagua map colors, and do not use colors that are known in our Western design and in our Western study of psychology to be bad because they make you eat too much or because they make you blue. So what colors to use in the in the kitchen is not, you know, I can't just sit here and tell you, use this color, use that other color. No, 
because it depends on the particular kitchen. It depends what size your kitchen is, if it's open concept or not, or not if your kitchen has a window, and uh, also um, the amount of light your kitchen gets naturally, and how much light do you have, how much overhead light do you have in your kitchen. So this all uh, depends. And uh, it also depends on where it is located in the Bagua map. And so for that reason, um, you can either, um, you can get this book, Expand the Professional Charts. You can also get the book, uh, Feng Shui Your Own Life Areas, and that are both on Amazon by me, Monica Castaneda. You know, my nickname is Moni, but my full name is Monica. And, um, or you can join the Feng Shui Dream Home Creation Lab. This week, we're starting kitchens, kitchens in the Feng Shui Dream Home Creation Lab. And we're going to be helping participants uh, choose their colors. First, evaluate the colors they have right now in their kitchens to see if those colors are serving them or not. And then uh, we're going to make suggestions on what to change. So changing the colors in the kitchen doesn't mean you have to repaint your walls. And it doesn't mean that you have to redo your cabinets. Sometimes it's... Uh, choosing the right color for a rug or choosing the right color for your kitchen towels. And there's other things that you can do to balance colors in your kitchen. And so that's my message for you today. If you have interest in joining the Feng Shui Dream Home Creation Lab, let me know. Uh, if you would like me to get you the link to this book or other books that have information on colors, let me know and I'll put those links uh, under this video. That's my message for you today and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.